I am Clement Munyani from Roma. And at Roma, I've been assigned to prepare the pilgrimages about Father Gerard. Father Gerard was born in France near the town of Nancy in Lorraine. He was born on the 12th of March, 1831. Born of a strong Catholic family. And during his boyhood days, he was a head boy. And as a head boy, he used to go around with the flocks and there alone would think about God. The parents of Father Gerard sent him to a sister named Sister Odile, who also taught him about the Christian life, mostly focusing on the love of Blessed Virgin and on the Holy Eucharist. At the age of eight, when he received his first communion, he had a calling saying, Gerard, I would like you to be my priest. And at the age of 13, he went to the seminary. He was in the minor seminary. And at the age of 18, he went to the major seminary. Whilst at the major seminary, they came two priests of a congregation that was new to them. He learned that this was the congregation of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, founded by Bishop Eugene de Marcinot. He loved this congregation very much. And he said, I think I have to be one of these. Why? Because of two reasons. The first reason was that the congregation was named after Blessed Virgin. And he said, I would like to serve God under this congregation that has the name of Mary, the mother of Jesus. The second reason was that the, the congregation was the a missionary congregation, which had to go into the world and teach about God, which has its motto as he has sent me to put the word of God amongst the poor. And he said, this is the congregation that I must follow. On that note, he went to his parents and asked permission from the parents so that he could join this new congregation, which also the parents didn't know about. The parents were reluctant, but at the end, they agreed to him to follow that new congregation. And as he, they had agreed, they sent him, they went with him to a mission, to a church called Our Lady of Zion, where they put him before Mary and Jesus. And he made a vow there uh, in the chapel to say, Mary, I'm, I will follow this congregation which has your name. And from there, he went to the Oblate Seminary where he learned much about this congregation. It is in this seminary where many virtues were observed and noted by his superiors. He says, although Brother Gerard is not so talented, I believe our blessed mother wants to make a little saint out of him. He was 20 years at that time. Again, he said, he exceeds all others as far as praying is concerned. The gifts of God work in him in a surprising manner. His devotion, praying manner, his endless praying to God, and his humility, all these are the virtues that are in him. His love to others is outstanding at all times. He has an extraordinary devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary like that of a baby to a mother. I'm convinced, the superior wrote, that 15 minutes cannot pass by without putting himself before God in prayer. The last testimony was endorsed by the founder of the Congregation of the Oblates, Bishop de Massimnot, on April the 8th, 1853. He stated, last Sunday, 
I ordain Brother Gerard as a deacon. He is indeed a holy deacon whom I am sending to the land of Natal. On the 10th of May, 1853, it was Father Barrett, Brother Bernard, and the deacon, Father Joseph Gerard. They were sent to Natal by Bishop Eugene de Massinot. And unfortunately, they took about 10 months before reaching Natal. Why? Because the ship was being driven away by the winds, the gale winds. It took, the winds took the ship to South America. And they had problem from South America to get a ship that would be going to Africa. They got one which landed them in Mauritius, where they spent a lot of time. And it is in Mauritius where the Bishop of Mauritius wrote to the Bishop of Natal to say, you have young men who are very good at their work. And he said, whilst here in Mauritius, Brother Gerard was very much interested in assisting in burying the dead. He was very much interested in teaching catechism. I think we'll have the best priest here. So they ended up reaching Natal and they were welcomed by Bishop Allard. After the arrival in Natal, Devon, Bishop Allard sent them to Peter Marisbeck, where after a day or two, they started a retreat. Brother Gerard was then ordained as a priest. He was very happy, and he made a vow to say, Blessed Virgin, here I am, your son. Now I'm becoming one of your oblates, the oblates of Mary Immaculate. I will serve with all dignity in this congregation. After the ordination, Father Gerard and Brother Barrett were then sent to Sululand. What had happened is Bishop de Masinot was aware that the, the priests who were there, Bishop Allard and others who were already there, were not paying much attention to the Zulus who were there. So he wrote a letter, Bishop Eugene de Masinot, to say, you have to go out in Natal and teach the, the Zulus about God. Joseph Girard was sent to go and find a place where a church could be established. This was a very heavy task. They have to travel for three days, not knowing where they were going, not knowing the road. They were told to go to a place called Amakele of Chief Dumisan and ask if he could allow them a church to be established. And when they reached that place, the chief of that place welcomed them and said to them, yes, you are free to come and teach here. They returned back to Peter Marisbeck to report. Then they went back to, to establish a new church, St. Michael. But they had other problems there. The Sulus were very happy to see them. The Sulus could not be converted. Father Gerard and Father Barrett were telling them that one has to be with one wife, not so many. And they said to them, no, why come so late? You should have come earlier before we had many wives. Now you are telling us that we should have one wife. And they were very angry with that. To some extent that at times they had to send Father Gerard dogs to bite him. And Father Gerard would pray Blessed Virgin for assistance. Later on, Father Gerard wrote to Bishop de Marcinot again, and he said to him, we are having problem here. Already we are here for about eight years, but there is no confession. 
nobody, no, nobody is converting. And the bishops wrote back to say, it's awful that after eight years, not even a single convert has been found. I would advise you to go deeper into the country, go deeper into the tribes of Africa. You will get to a place where the mercy of God will explode like a grace, and there you will establish a church of God. Upon receiving this letter, Bishop Allard and Father Gerard left Natal until on the 8th of February, 1862, when they arrived here in Lesotho at a place called Hamalab. The Catholic Church in Lesotho was established in 1862 with the arrival of the missionary oblates of Mary Margaret from France. These were by name Bishop Allard, OMI, Blessed Joseph Girard, of course, who has become blessed now, who was beatified in 1988, and there was also Brother Bernard. So these are the three pioneer missionaries that arrived in Lesotho in 1862. They reported themselves to Chief Malab. Chief Malab told them that I am not the owner of this country. I would refer you to go to my father, Chief Moshweshwe, who is at Tababusiv. And they left, came to Tababusiv. When arriving to Tababusiv, they met Chief Moshweshwe, who welcomed them. They said, we would like you to allow us to serve in your country. First, we would like to teach your people about God. Secondly, we would like to teach your people how to read and write. And he welcomed them. As he welcomed them, he said, I will give you a place where you will stay. But they went back, they said, we are going back to Natal to collect our luggage and everything. We just came here to find permission if you could be allowed. Now that you have allowed us, we are going back to Natal to fetch everything. And on the 21st of October, 1862, they arrived at a place called Roma. It should be known that before the Catholic Church was established, which now in terms of numbers is the Catholic Church is the dominant church in Lesotho, despite the fact that it only arrived 30 years after the Protestant Church in this country. Bishop Allard, Father Joseph Gerard, and Brother Bernard arrived at this place, which is called Roma, or the village of the Mother of Jesus. And this place they were given by Kim Mushashwe. He had said, I will give you a place where we can establish your mission. The Catholics uh, established their mission here. This was named after Rome. The reference to being Romans from Rome. It is called Roma because the Roman resides there. That's why it is called Roma. The area is called Mutsuwaha Majis, the village of Majis. The area around this, that's where the Romans, oh, the Romans reside in that place. So that's Roma. Upon their arrival, they pitched their tents here, at this place here. That's where they first pitched their tents. And after pitching their tents, now they left everything here and had to start building at a mission there, building their dwelling house and the church. Brother Bernard was assigned to do all the buildings and everything connected with housing. 
while Father Gerard was going to the people. Let's imagine here we see Blessed Gerard, Bishop Alab, and Brother Bernard. These people did not even know the language. The only language that they had learned, of course, would be Zulu, the years that they spent, of course, in, in, the, in South Africa. So here they are. They had to say their mass, of course, not in Sesotho. There was nothing like that. They had to say it in Latin. One thing that one is still asking even today, whether the, the fact that the, the mass was said, it even, even in a very strange, the whole thing was so strange for the Sesotho. But then, on top of it of all, it was said in Latin. I've, I've never been able to assess how, what impact this has had. But all I can tell you is that, that they were so attracted to Catholic Church. There are things that maybe one can explain about how Basuto embraced the faith, but really there are other elements where it becomes very difficult how to explain how this happened. On the 1st of November, which was the Feast of All Saints, the first Catholic Church was inaugurated under the name of Mary Immaculate Conception. On that inauguration day, Morana Mishashu was there. He was there to witness the inauguration of the new church. Father Gerard became very friendly with Morana Mishashu. And he said to him, we have a place here and we like that place to be called the mother of Jesus, the village of the mother of Jesus. And Marana Mshosha agreed to that. So the place was called the mother of Jesus. In Susutu, we say, Hamma Jesu, Motsuwa Hamma Jesu. The success of the work of Blessed Joseph Girard and how come among the three pioneers that came, how come these populations, the Basuto themselves, had such a great devotion to him? So what he did was contact, a personal contact he had with different families. This would be the man who not even mind staying with a family and to make sure that he would catechize, instruct that family, and make sure that when he, he leaves, one thing that he would never leave any family without making sure that at least that family is well found in his faith. Father Gerard was said to be going from village to village, not having time to sleep. All the time he was going, when he was going out, a rosary in his hand. He was a prayerful somebody. And if in those places where he went, he went, it, he would go on foot on the scorching heat of the sun. Sometimes rain, he will climb the mountains and cross the rivers, but he would not say, I am tired. He would continue daily. And he would go there and even get to the huts where nobody could get into there. He would go to every Musutu, he would see to it that he, he teaches Basutu the Catholic religion. I think that the, the dedication of the missionaries, beginning with, with uh, Blessed Joseph Gerard, really the, the people showed an extraordinary love from, the, from Blessed Joseph Gerard. For instance, now, in Father Joseph Gerard, he heard that there was an old lady somewhere around Roma who was living there alone, and F Blessed Joseph Gerard went, he picked up that old lady, he put her on his shoulders and then he brought her to, to, to Roma. He took her from home to here and washed her and then baptized her and then the lady passed away after being baptized. So the sisters arrived on the 26th of April, 1865. Bishop Allard saw that it was necessary to ride back to France 
Bordeaux to the sisters of Holy Family to request them to come to Lesotho so that they maybe take this part of teaching. It was unfortunate that two months after the arrival of those sisters, there broke a war between the Boers and the Basotho. This was a very fierce war, and the Boers were gaining the upper hand. This war affected the whole of Lesotho. This is, this is Lopepina, rather a fine bronze of him. And um, he was the general of the Southern Free State, the Free State in those days, a republic, during the Second Basuto War of 1865. The Suto were expanding westwards and the Boers were expanding eastwards. And uh, they say never the twain shall meet. They did. And there, were some, there was some fierce fighting. But um, before arriving at Mesheshwi's capital, Lovepina had been knocking out various mountain strongholds, very much sort of um, like Iron Age fortresses. The Basuta were all uh, up on top, throwing things down at, at the people trying to, to overcome them. And uh, Lovepina took a succession of these fortresses and in the process um, claimed all the territory that he'd, um, that he'd defeated as conquered and uh, single-handedly proclaimed a whole lot of Basuta land, Mesheshwi's kingdom, as free state territory. The priest and the sisters had left the mission at Roma. They had gone into hiding in one place, uh, now called Maputo. So they came to this place for hiding. This is where Father Gerard showed his interest. He sometimes would go to Tababusiu, where Chief Mushesho was. That Tababusiu was surrounded by a regiment of Boers. But he would go there at night. He would climb the mountain, pass these Boers without them noticing him, and get to Morana Mushesh. In fact, really, he showed much interest to the king that's why you're in the, you're in the, the, the walls of the, of, the, of the boss. He was bringing, sometimes he was bringing food to the chief on the Mount of Tawabsi. Then it, it is called the, the night mountain because they said uh, there is an, uh, a legend that uh, the, 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 the mountain during the day it was small, but at night it seems it has grown. So the, 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 the enemies were unable to climb it. But so Blessed Joseph Gerard managed to, to go through the, 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 the secret ways to bring some food to the, to the king on top of the mountain and also some advices. It is said that during that time when uh, the, our mountain Tawawusiu was uh, besieged, by the South Africans, the Boers, uh, that he would go from here at Roma. Uh, he would take bread and some food to go and bring it to Mushesh. You can imagine people around that area, although they had their food, uh, they had uh, Mabele, which is sorghum, they had uh, pony, which is maize, they could grind it and then have food but it was getting scarce and scarce. So in the era, although it was small, a bit of a piece that he took from here to Tabawusi, but there was something that he was bringing for the armies of Mushesh and go and talk to Mushesh about how he could ask for peace. And then he would also ask him to pray. He would tell him that he will pray for him for peace to come to his country. He said, we would like to help in this war, but we don't use guns. This is how we fight. Allow us, please, to put your country under the protection of the Blessed Virgin. And Morana Mushesha agreed to that. On the 15th of August, which is the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin into heaven, it was the day that the Boers had sworn that now, today, we are going to conquer 
this country, the 15th of August. On the same day, Bishop Allard, Father Gerard, and the sisters were in the church, and Lesotho was put under the protection of the Blessed Virgin. So in the afternoon of the same date, Father Gerard left the mission and came to this place. And when he arrived here, since the Boers were all over this place, they identified him, and they saw that there was a tent here. Father Gerard was alone in that tent. As I said, the sisters and everybody had gone to church to pray for the sort of being put under the protection of the Blessed Virgin. And the poor started shooting at that tent. The bullets were piercing the tent in all corners. He saw that he had reached his death, he was going to die. And he resorted to the Blessed Virgin. He said, Mary, please help me. For if you save me, I, I swear that I will make a novena of masses, nine days of masses. It is said that none of the bullets got to Father, Father Gerard. There was a book, a prayer book, a breviary near him. These bullets tore that, that book, but Father Gerard, not a single bullet came to Father Gerard until when the, the Boers were exhausted, they thought they had done the deed. But Father Gerard was saved. This is the place where Father Gerard was saved during the Boer War. But um, though Vepner himself came to grief up on the slopes of Tarba Basu, up near the top, he was leading a force of 600 trying to dislodge the Basuto. And um, the fighting was so fierce that, it, that, that when he got near the top, he had only 60 of his 600 left. Most of them very young people, 19-year-olds, um, 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds. And um, he sent word down, he sent a runner down the very steep slopes, asking for reinforcements. Nothing came. In fact, he sent three runners. Nothing came. It was getting dark. And he had a big decision to make. He was so close to the top, should he have a go anyway, or should he call it a day and retreat? What happened is, on that same day, while the Boers were heavy fighting at Tababusi, the commander of the Boers was killed by the Basuto. He was immediately killed. He was leading. He was killed with a stray bullet and died on the spot. From down below, they heard two great cries. One cry was the Basuto um, cheering when they saw Levep and the Four, and the other was a groan from the, from the Bura when they saw Levep and the Four. After that, Father Gerard wrote in his diary and said, it was surprising that the Boers would say they would conquer the country on the Feast of the Blessed Virgin. I have something here that they got it from the writing of Father Jane Louis Richard, OMI. In his book, he said, from 1862 until his death in 1914, Father Gerard never left Lesotho. He was with the Lesotho in good and bad times, in times of famine as in times of abundance, in times of war and in times of peace. He clearly demonstrated his solidarity with the Basotho during the Boer War. This was the year of suffering and death, which the Basotho have never forgotten. Because of his faithfulness to their chief Mushashi during the Boer War, Father Gerard was accepted by the Basotho as one of them. On the 8th of September, 1865, there were those eight who were baptized on the 8th of, of September, which is incidentally is the feast of the Nativity of Blessed Virgin. And among those eight, there were three who are called the flowers of the first uh, baptism. From those three, they came one of the first 
priest from that family. And from another family was the first Mosotu to become a sister in the, in the order of the Sisters of Holy Family. And from another family, that is where it came the first oblate priest, Father Emmanuel Mabatwan, who later became the first Mosotu bishop and the first African archbishop. In years later, Father Gerard was still going to the villages and seeing to it that he helped everybody. But in 1876, he was assigned to go to Le Ribe. And it is said that he was given 13 pounds to go and establish that mission. St. Monica's was founded by Father Joseph Gerard in 1876. That was the second mission to be founded by that day, Gerard. And then he gave it the, 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 the name of Monica because he, he, he said uh, since uh, Monica was the mother of St. Augustine, a, an African woman, he, he said uh, he, he gave this mission that special name because of that. In the river also, he had tireless times of going to the villages, teaching everybody about God. Remember then there was not even the, the physical infrastructure that we have. It was hard to go around this country. So to be seeing these old men walking around and he could sleep anywhere, he could eat whatever was given to him. But one thing that of course that uh, I think the people felt much attracted to Blessed Gerard was of course his spirit of prayer. He would get tired walking around but they knew that he would never even go to bed without asking. That particular family is that they pray. When coming from the villages, he would come very late. All he would do, returning from his daily duty, he would go back to the church and start praying and go to his office and prepare for the following day. It is said that in one of those days, he was praying so late, he was having a candle in his hand whilst having a book, a prayer book for the priest on the other hand. And he wasn't aware the candle was now starting to burn the beard because he was concentrating on the prayer and until he had the smell that something was wrong. This shows how devoted he was, how prayerful he was. And Father Gerard would spend a lot of time in church praying. One day whilst he was praying in church, people came to say to him, Father, there is somebody who, who has requested us to come to you so that we could go and see him. He, he can die at any time. He's seriously sick. And Father Gerard said, well, I'm still praying. I will come. That person died. And another convoy was sent, or two other people were sent to the mission saying, go and tell the priest not to trouble himself by coming because this man is dead. And when they arrived, they said, please, Father, don't bother yourself by going to that person. He is dead. And Father Gerard said, but there are people who came here, they said he wanted to see me. I'm going. And he went. When he arrived at the village, 
People had gathered there because someone had stayed in there. And he arrived, he got into the, into the house, and he called him by his name. Azarias, here I am, my friend. I learned you wanted to see me. Here I am. Azarias got back from the death. He came alive again. And Father Gerard talked to him, gave him the last sacraments, had his confession. After that, he said, well, my friend, you can sleep in peace now. Um, I've seen you. And he went. After he had just left the door, Azarias became dead again. Gerard was not only the man, of course, uh, of only the, let's say, the elderly or others, but he was also interested in the ordinary people. In this country, one feature that you are going to see is if you walk around the Sutu, there are people here called the head boys, which, as far as I'm concerned, are are really at the, the lowest level of the social level here. They are, Father Gerard was, showed very much concern for those people. He would talk to them. He would have chance to even to speak as he walked around. He said, what are you doing and what, how is your life? So this seem to have, these are the things that have attracted for, you know, people to Father Gerard. It is said somewhere that uh, one time he was... Uh, he was late on a Friday because every Friday, Friday uh, the people were saying the way of the cross. And sometimes if Father Gerard would be the one leading the way of the cross, it go very slowly. So one day, one of the priests decided to be the leader of the, this prayer. And as they prayed, and the people who were with there were very happy because they were going from station to station in a quick manner. And when they get to the, the, the seventh station, Father Gerard stood up and said, wait, 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 wait. Then he said, oh, my children, do you think that Jesus, when he was going up the Calvary, he was so hasty like you are doing? Our Lord was very slow when going to the Calvary because of the heavy cross, because of our sins. They were too heavy for him. You can't be running like that when you make the way of the cross. And they had to return to the first station and start, restart again. In, in, in his writings, he said uh, he liked St. Monica's. There were ups and downs, but uh, above all, really, he, he said he liked it. Yeah. Before he went to, to, to Leribe, he had spent about 14 years at Rome. In Leribe, he spent about 22 years and then returned back to, to Rome. Father Gerard was getting old, but he was not getting tired. Those virtues that were mentioned by his superior at the, sem at the seminary, it appeared that the, the, the superior had predicted the life of Father Gerard. And it is at that time, as being a very prayerful person, Basoto used to say, Father Gerard does not eat. They said, Father Gerard's food is praying. He eats prayer. This is how they described him. When Father Gerard left, Roma to St. Monica's. He had 500 Catholics. He left 500 Catholics here at Roma. He went to St. Monica, and on his retirement, on his recall from St. Monica, at St. Monica, he had 700 Catholics left there. That was his work. And now he was tired. He writes, on those old days of his, he says, though he writes to, to his brothers and sisters, now I'm getting old, but I still go to the village to see the sick and the old aged. You can imagine 
an old man like me, I have my horse here, which is called Aradaba. I have my horse. You can see when two gentlemen, strong young gentlemen, take me and put me on top of the horse. And when I get to the village, there will be other waiting for me there to get me down from the horse because he could not do that himself because of old age. And I go into the hut and pray and see the sick, give them the sacraments, hear their confession, and return back being a happy person. And Father Gerard, as I said, he was getting old. And it was decided that he should be retired from the work. And somebody, another priest, Father Pernat, was put in his place. Father Gerard was the lover of Eucharist. He was the lover of Blessed Virgin. And during his old days, it was not possible for him to celebrate Mass anymore. And other priests deemed it fit that since he's the lover of Eucharist, a chapel should be, his room, his sitting room, should be converted into a chapel. So he had a sleeping room and a chapel because of the Eucharist. We can see there is this altar here that was in his uh, room. This is where he was celebrating Mass in his room. It is said that he stopped or ended ending Mass on the 22nd of May 1940. He was very sick. The sisters of the Holy Family went to see him as he was sick. But this is the message that he's, he left with them. You can see that I'm old and I'm dying. And when I die, don't think that I will be only going to heaven. Know that when I'm in heaven, I will be waking very much for you, Basuto. I will be waking for you, Basuto, while in heaven. This is the last message which he gave. He told us before he left, he said, when he was about to go, when he was about to die, he said, I will be, go, I will be leaving you, uh, but I will not forget you when I am in heaven. And on the 29th of May, he passed away at 9 o'clock in the evening. This is how he met his death. That's why at this funeral, one of the chiefs said, we are here bearing a saint, a lover of Basotho. So the, the love that Pastor Joseph Gerard showed to the Basotho, I think it is the one that, uh, the, 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 that helped to people to, 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 to join, to, to join the, the, the Catholic Church, because they saw the, that he loved with his whole heart. <laughs> We have to mention that Father Gerard, while still alive, had many miracles made uh, by him. But now that he was dead, people used to come from places, far places in Lesotho. They'd go to the cemetery and go to the grave of Father Gerard, put their children who were sick there, and make novenas and pray, and children would be healed at that grave. One of those miracles that happened, the miracle that the church found fit to be called a miracle, is that of a child 
who was blind. And the parents took her to the doctor. But the doctor, the medical practitioner said uh, it was useless. Uh, this child could not see anymore. Nothing could be done, he said so. She went to the mission to Father Penrat, who was in charge at the mission, and told Father Penrat this story. And Father Penrat said, we'll see what we can do. He said, we have to make a novena to Father Gerard. And the child and the mother went home. They started this novena. It is said that on the last day of the novena, the night, that night, the ninth night, during the night, the child woke up the mother and said, Mother, I can see. And the mother ignored that. And in the morning, when they woke up, she saw that there was difference. This child could see. So they went to Father Penarat at the mission and explained everything. Father Penarat asked, what happened? And the child said, during the night while I was sleeping, there came a priest who put his hand on my head and said, now you can see. And Father Penarat became aware of what happened. He went into his office and collected all the, the, the photos of the priest who had been at Roma. And one by one, he was asking the child, is it this one? And the child would say, no, it's not this one. And when he brought the picture of Father Gerard, the child said, yes, this is the priest who came to me at night and put his hand on my head and said, now you can see. And from there, the child was taken back to the medical practitioner for re-examination. When Han, she got there, the medical practitioner was surprised. He said, no, I've been attending to this child. Really, I don't see how this happened. This is the miracle that the congregation for the canonization of the saints accepted. And because of that miracle, hence why Father Gerard became beatified. Upon seeing this, the church decided that they had to, to exhume the remains of Father Gerard from the graveyard and put it near the church at that time. Today, the remains of Father Gerard are in his chapel. It was outside the church from 1940 until 1988 when Pope John Paul II came. I am now getting into the chapel of Father Gerard. And previously, the, 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 the grave was outside the church. When Father Gerard was being exhumed, or his remains were being exhumed from the graveyard, the church graveyard, when he was being reburied here, a different coffin was made, was used. And the original coffin, it is still in here where it is kept safely. Father Gerard was buried down at the cemetery on the 1st of June, 1914. And we have the coffin here kept safely here. This is where, in 1940, uh, after the exhumation, he was, the remains were reburied here. Roma Parish has established these pilgrimages to the grave of Father Gerard. Early in the morning before the mass ended in the pilgrimage, there is a procession that is being made by all those who came with their candles on because it normal, it's always at night. During this pilgrimage that we have now, there are people from uh, around the country. And uh, you expect people from Botswana. Currently, we are having people from Zambia also 
We are also having people from South Africa, all parishes of South Africa are uh, represented here and they come really in, in numbers. And then it takes the whole night uh, with different activities until at four o'clock when we have the mass of Joseph Girard. No wonder that uh, in 1988 then he was beatified, uh, the clear witness of the holiness of the heroic virtues of these men of God is that even today we have people coming from all over Southern Africa, Botswana, uh, not to mention South Africa, Namibia, and asking uh, that there will be the soldiers taken from the grave of this holy man they believe in this soil because it has touched the grave of Father Gerard. You will remember that our Lord Jesus Christ at one time, when one blind person came to him, he took the soil and used it to make that person see. This is the belief that we have. When the Pope, Pope Paul, John Paul II came here in 1988. The first thing that he did was to enter into this church. It was on the 14th of September. And he came and knelt here and prayed on this grave of Father Gerard. I remember when he arrived in Roma, after a hard, uh, you know, expectation because he was supposed to have landed in, in, in in Lesotho, but he landed in Johannesburg, and then he came down by car. So when he arrived, it was late, around 8 o'clock, between 8 o'clock and, and 9 o'clock. And when, when he arrived, first thing, is he went to the tomb of Blessed Joseph Gerard in Roma. And then when he, he went up to the altar, he said, uh, greetings from Roma in Italy to Roma in Lesotho and said, I greet you, Basutu, with peace, really. We, we, we found really a very holy man. He, he deepened our faith, really. And we hope and we pray that one day a miracle will occur and Father Gerard will be declared a saint. You remember in the beginning, Bishop Eugene de Masinot said, this is a holy deacon whom I'm sending to Africa. Let us stick to that word of Bishop Eugene Masinant. This is no more a holy deacon, but a saint. Mm -hmm.